Hey, welcome back to the <laughs> Fighter Stance. This podcast is brought to you by Defense Wipes or Defense Soap. Defense Wipes work great whenever uh, you have a 110 people on the mat because Nikki Rodriguez is teaching. And then you have to go immediately to a podcast and uh, you don't have time to go out and run home and take a shower. So Defense Wipes. Sick. Yeah. All right. Nikki Rod. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming and teaching today. That was freaking amazing. Um, for those of you that don't know who Nick Rodriguez is, um, he's commonly known as Nikki Rod. He's a professional grappler, no gi jiu jitsu specialist, former amateur wrestler who worked extensively. Ultimately, one of the freaking most talented grapplers on the planet. Um, it's weird to to isn't that weird to say out loud? Like, <laughs> nah. like hear it all the time. Right? Us, 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 <laughs> we're from, I'm from New Jersey, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we live. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some achievements: first place ADC U.S. Coast Trials 2019, second place uh, ADC World Championships in 2019 and 2022, um, ADC East Coast Trials. Like, th this is the who's who's list of the hardest tournaments in in, in grappling, mm -hmm. and uh, you're. Podium, podium, podiuming. Yeah, I think being on the podium, hitting the podium. Did you? So Something when you like when that. you won your first the first East Coast Trials, what belt were you? Uh, white, white belt. I got my blue belt. <laughs> as, uh, well, yeah. So I I took third in East Coast Trials um, with about three months of training, and then uh, eight months in, uh, I won West Coast Trials, and then you know three months after that, second at, at Worlds. It's wild. So I, I remember watching that, and um, you know that. There, there were some legacy black belts that now, now the kind of not to coin that phrase, but like the, there's a new wave of young athletes coming in from B team, um, the new uh, Sean J team mm -hmm. and, and new wave um, lots of youth, the Rotello brothers. Like it's, it's fun that there's so many young, just crazy talented athletes out there. But that one, there were still like legacy names that you that every black belt from our generation was like, dude. And then there's this nobody, no belt, little brown kid with green eyes going out there, <laughs> like mopping up some some epic black belts. Yeah, my first uh, ADCC World Championship in 2019, I really just had decent Division Three wrestling and an ability to do good like anti jujitsu. Right, I had ability to avoid submission, stay on top, and uh, in the heavyweight division, you know, it's uh, generally a, the heavier you are, the least technical it is. You know, I think if I was a lighter guy, I'd, I'd probably have more trouble. Um, but uh, but yeah, I was able to kind of hold my ground against some of the best grapplers in the world, and I. Really Really focused on, on the later years, uh, perfecting techniques and not just being so one dimensional, not just relying on the wrestling, but now I have the ability to pass guard in multiple ways, sweep an opponent from bottom. And uh, now, you know, I, I went from beating guys at close matches at, at the world class level to dominating and then and now I'm close to subbing them. Freaking awesome! Was was that was that the first year? Was that when you had that match against Orlando Sanchez? Yeah, my, that was my first ADCC. I went uh, Orlando and then Cyborg. The next, yeah, next that, match, that match versus Orlando, it looked like a fist fight. Like, it felt like it one. Looked, yeah, yeah. It was so physical, it was crazy. That like you guys and ADCC, like if you go off the mats, they don't okay. whatever. Yeah, that, that yeah, match. So physicality. I mean, not just in that match. Um, there, there's definitely um, and. I'm not saying this in a disparaging way, like you're an athlete mm -hmm. and you're a martial artist. And, you know, when you look at Haley Gracie and uh, Hoyler Gracie is one of Gracie might at school, like they're petite, fragile looking men, you know, that like had to use technique to, to, to survive. Um, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then the American athlete is introduced to jujitsu mm -hmm. and we just start destroying everybody. And uh, I, you and Gordon and um, I mean, Satoshi Ishii is another example, like physical specimens of humans that are also like wildly and wickedly good. Uh, what in in how you dedicate your time? If you're just like going to break down in the hours of training that you have in a day or in a week, if you're training four six hours, how do you break that down into? I'm focusing on strength and conditioning i'm focusing on technique i'm focusing on um mat endurance like these are all different buckets H how do you manage good, that good question so uh, <clears throat> so i break training down into two different sections 
pre-comp, which I'm in camp for competition, and then uh, off-season training, which which the only difference is uh, the focus in, in training. So in jiu-jitsu, I train uh, seven days a week at, at all, all year long. Um, but when I'm pre-competition, I'm in, in camp to compete. Um, maybe three three of, to four of those days, I'm treating a few rounds like competitive rounds like I would in exactly in competition. And then when I'm training off season, uh, I'm heavily focusing on different uh, different parts of my game. I like to look at myself and say, how would I beat Nicky Rod? And then just kind of find those holes and, and fill them in uh, little by little. I was in this, I had this problem like um, early on in my career that every time I'd learned something I had to go out there and perform it against a world-class black belt, black belt world champ. So like, I feel like a lot of guys in jiu-jitsu, you know, they're learning stuff as they're going up the ranks from blue belt to, to purple to brown, where me, I was just like, I was that white belt, blue belt. And then every time I learned a new move, I had to test it on the best guys in the world. So it made it really hard to, um, to be like technically savvy in the first couple of years. So I had to I had to find a section of time where I would take a couple months, compete a lot, and then take a few months and not compete at all and just focus on uh, on getting better and prov proving my skills. It's like at the beginning of my jiu-jitsu career, I only had wrestling and athleticism. And so every time I'd compete, I, I'd only use what I had. And then I'd take a few months, not compete, and then really focus on the technical aspect. And then when comp competition came back around, I'd focus again on, on blending the two together. And right now, I'm at the stage where the two are, are, are meeting in the middle and it's coming together really well yeah so you just got your black belt yep so who who gave that to you how is the yeah so i'm a black belt on there craig jones nikki ryan and uh, ethan crowley team one of the, one of the first b team jiu-jitsu black belts and uh it feel it feels great i uh you know i was competing at the at the black belt level since the beginning um but to receive a black belt i felt very honored and um and, and so I for six years you've been fighting at the black belt yes yeah, so Five. from from now from the time you started doing jujitsu until you receive your black belt, how long was that? Five years. That's fast. That's yeah, crazy. Pretty yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah. But like, yeah. if you're going off off of the ability to compete, I mean, like, yeah, no, one hundred percent. First, wrestling. You got a leg wrestling. up on. Oh, wrestling yeah. is. I, I owe a lot of my um my tenacity, my mentality when I compete to wrestling because I have I've had hundreds of wrestling matches. <laughs> so we're, when guys are trying to learn how to be calm in the fire it's like I, i've been there so many times you know I, it, when things get heated you know i'm, I'm cool as ice so so going to that so i watched the documentary the quintet documentary which is awesome um and and part of it it shows you and your your little brother like getting ready to compete and you're both like locked in super serious and then you have the flip side of that which is Craig Jones and a couple of other guys who are not serious. I mean, they're serious when they, comp they compete, but beforehand, they're like joking around. Have you always been like locked in like that? Like before, even when you were wrestling, we started jiu-jitsu, have you always been like locked in like that? Or is that something that's developed like a little bit later? I just see competing as... Uh it matters a lot to me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like, you know, Craig has this, um, this persona, like, you know, he's like, uh, the second best grappler in the world. It's like kind of his niche that he's found, which is, works great for selling things. And, and <laughs> he kind of protect himself. So where, to where as like, if he ever loses, he's like, oh, I'm fucking, I'm supposed to lose. You know? So, uh, but for me, uh, I, I, I care about being the absolute number one pound for pound grapple in the world. So, um, when I go grapple, I want to win and I want to win in, in a very dominant fashion. Um, and uh, I just think that, I don't know, I want all of my attention to be on, on my battle. Like, there's a lot of guys that scroll through their phone or they're like, they're playing like, you know, some spike ball or whatever pre-competition. But if you make, if you make 500 decisions and then you go out to battle, you're not going to be at nearly as sharp if you just made a, like no decisions and all of your best decisions are on the mat or, you know, um, doing what really matters so for me i just like i don't scroll through the phone i don't really talk to anybody by the time i open my eyes I, i'm a, i'm doing my warm-up and then i'm going out there and, and doing it that's sick yeah we um good perspective too yeah it's it's fun like the decision making thing i like that because it's like your brain has so many has so much juice in it right yeah and so much fucking so much gas in the tank so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I like that. Never we're, thought of that before. Speaking about wanting to be the best grappling world, we're in like this awkward position right now and like the best, like the guys are at the top, right? Because the final super fight at ADCC is going to be Gordon versus Yuri. And yeah. you just housed Yuri. I did. So put like. Put him in a mud house. <laughs> yeah. So like if you, <laughs> if, you, if you look at that. Did though, you sweat? 
I uh, I sweat. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I sweat a little bit. No, in that in that fight, in, the, in that fight. Yeah, I sweat. Yeah, <laughs> I. I I sweat so much they think I'm greasing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you heard the accusations. You know? Oh, we hear all the. We, yeah. So currently we're sitting in Austin, Texas. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and I uh, like post prime. I, I still love to train with you guys. I still mm -hmm. love. Um, I haven't got to train as often as I'd like with you, mm -hmm. but I get to train with with literally everybody that's in the city in yeah. the city. And um and I don't not that I'm Switzerland or anything, but like <laughs> I don't go into any of the, those worlds or conversations. Um, but I get to listen to all the shit talking. Yeah, and it's hilarious. Um, because like, I mean, that's not my impression. Like that's not my, like I get to work out like with him. Like he's come and trained with us, and yeah. like he comes and it's like that's. I mean, sure, but also not really. Yeah. So. I'm not a, I'm not a, a cheater. I'm, you know, it's not it's not my style. If I was to do any cheating, I would do PEDs over some <laughs> lotion. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know what I mean. Uh, we had the right way you know, that's oiled. Uh, wrestling, like in high school, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like some of the bigger tournaments, you'd go out there and you'd be like, like especially freestyle, you'd be like, ref, you're supposed to check both of us. And that motherfucker's yeah. slippery. Yeah. I got a, <laughs> yeah, John McCarthy and I once or twice a year go after each other about the UL Rom Romero fight. Yeah. But he's also a, a great ref. Yeah. And one fight in particular, um, he, I'm not going to disparage the guy that's fighting, but I, I, was, gr I was grabbing his back and his, the back, the sweat on his back was like bubbling yeah. oh. into like little balls of, of water and like dripping off his back. And uh, in between round one and round two, he brings in the athletic commission uh, where, and they scrub him down in the middle of the fight. Wow. And uh, like just my, I, and we're, we're in my corner, Greg Jackson's like trying to scrub my hands to get the grease off of my hands. And it was straight up Crisco. Like you could smell it. <laughs> wow. Really? Like you put Crisco on your body to go fight. Um, also though, that was the same fight where your Romero, Tim pieced him up pretty bad in the second round, mm -hmm. and they went back to their corners. And your Romero stayed on. Oh, this is a different fight. That oh, was different. Super, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you you well always finds a different way to cheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But in this instance, it wasn't you well. Oh. Yeah, it was so wild because I knew he was going to cheat, and I, I I prepped for him grabbing the cage on takedowns. I had prepped for um, getting him trying to poke me in the eye. Uh, after I heard him, mm. I prepped for groin strikes for breaks. I like mentally thought, cause I knew every time that he fights, he finds a way to cheat. Yeah. I just never had. And it was such a fault on my part to also not think about one that I couldn't think about. Like I never thought that his whole entire corner would be in on it. Right. That they would usually like use the stool and a language barrier and drop a bag of ice and put on too much grease to too much Vaseline in between the rounds, like literally every single thing that you could possibly do. Um, like, so it was kind of my fault. Yeah. But you no, know, it was a different fighter oh, okay. on, on a different night. Uh, I thought we were talking about that. The set yeah. was like, it, it was, seems about right yeah, though. <laughs> it was strike force era. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, with everyone here in Austin. Mm -hmm. So we have Victor Hugo. Mm -hmm. um, Victor and Marigelli have like a beef. Um, B Team and New Wave have like a beef. Uh, does Six Blades have a beef with um, no, B Team? Pre pretty, pretty neutral. I don't think it's not necessarily B Team and New Wave. It's more so... Um, B team and Gordon, and then now Marigali as well. In an interview recently, um, Marigali called referred to me as a donkey, right? So sick bird. So I called him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is that a language bird thing? Or was that like a Portuguese yeah. thing? It's a schoolyard like, leaf. Like some yeah. schoolyard bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, if he would have you ever fought you him? No, I've we had I requested him. We had a like a contract. That's a great matchup. Yeah, we had a contract signed uh, on their flow grappling, and he um, he just pulled out and. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. I've seen him in, a, in a, a couple of weeks. Craig's Craig, yeah, he's in Brazil, oh. I think. Uh, but Craig, Craig fought him at yeah, ADCC and beat him. Yeah, yep, for sure. Craig looked good. Uh, yeah. So I, in the gym with Craig, uh, the last time I did anything with him, he threw me through the air uh, like a flying trapeze. Yep, I saw that. Out of, out of, <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Where I burn it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're you're supposed to like be fighting from this position to run up and get on the shooting line, and um, I think I belly down came up with an underhook, and then he launched me, like feet in the sky <laughs> through the air, um, landed and rolled into a single, but also like 
got thrown like a child. <laughs> yeah, was, that was great. Great. You didn't time. want you didn't want that to end that way. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a tough way to end it. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard. That's yeah. a hard <laughs> I mean, also getting darsed out it, like after going belly down on a single, which is what happened to me on him mm. like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. Um, nice. So with uh, with so much high talent in Austin, mm -hmm. how do you navigate like the Cobra Kai gym beefs? I lay booby traps around town. I yeah. track, I track their highways. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll hang a billboard, a billboard near their house, yeah. so like of me waving or something. No, um, you know, it's it's not MMA, so the guys aren't looking to uh, like fist fight or anything. So it's pretty pretty mutual. You know, most of the guys that talk that talk online, they don't want any um, any problem in person as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's not. It's just online drama like yeah. they, you know posting memes and stuff which is good for the sport you know yeah. a little, little bit of extra attention is good on us the sport has never been bigger than with you five yeah in the positions that you're in right now yeah but if any of them wanted to uh actually fight like i'd be very open to doing a professional mixed martial arts uh, event is that I, something that you want to do like eventually trans like move to fighting or not really but if if gordon or marigali were like hey let's fight i'd be like yeah like let's let's fight you know no problem yeah. um but it's just because it would grow the sport it'd be good for business i mean i don't see any downside to it um but as that. far as uh, uh yeah yeah <laughs> i don't think that's probably a big aspect to why they wouldn't be interested in doing something like that um but uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would need a fat check um, to fight because it would take me it took me quite a, uh, a long time to acclimate the the hands, the striking, uh, cage wrestling, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's not out of the books. Jujitsu pays well, uh, but I'm trying to be wealthy. I'm yeah. wealthy one day. <laughs> yeah, I've really had like my brain get changed about because I ne I've never cared about money. Mm -hmm. And um, Bedros Kulian uh, a couple of years ago, he's like can you list the things that you care about? I listed like, these are all the things that, that are important to me. And, and he's like, money gives you leverage to positively influence all of these things. It's like, why would you not care? Mm -hmm. Like that is such a selfish way to be. Cause these things that you care about are very selfless. Mm -hmm. Like you want to help the veteran community. You know, you want, you want to help the, service members not kill themselves. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the homeless population, that's a crazy percent are, are, are veterans. Um, you want to help your SF brothers that are fighting cancer, but you don't care about money. And I was like, all right, now you make me feel like a piece of crap. Yeah. You know? like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so that was just a few years ago. So it really changed how it's so like wealth matters. Um, wealth definitely matters. And, uh, you know, I, I like to be really wealthy one day, give back some, somehow. I like how, you know, Obviously, you're a you know American hero, but you also give back to community constantly. It's like uh, right. not many people you know do do things like that. Good also, people, good people do. Also, most of the people that work, I think ninety eight percent of the people work here are all veterans. Yeah. So like guys who got out or uh, guys who needed a job, like me, I came in here to uh, do jujitsu a couple of days, and then I was here for like a month. And he called me. He was like, "Hey." What are you doing? I was like, I got a job. He was like, Yeah, you do. Teaching jujitsu. <laughs> <He's like, laughs> I need you to quit the job that you just got <laughs> yeah. and take the job that I'm offering you yeah. and just come and, and yeah. Was it like the day you started so, too? No, yeah. So I, I started this job. I was being a security guard at a hospital, armed security guard at a hospital. I did my first day and then he called me and I saw the phone number. I was like, uh, oh, this might be important. But I didn't know it was him. Mm -hmm. And it's a nine one zero number, which is uh, Fayetteville. Yeah, yeah, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Yeah, so I was like, this might be important. And he was like, where were you at today? I was like, I started. I'm. I have a job. And he's like, yeah, working for me. And I was <laughs> like, oh. He's like, being here tomorrow. We'll talk about it. I was like, okay, right on. <laughs> yeah, sending it. Not a bad way to get a job, right? No, there, no. Not <laughs> Listen, at I'm all. a direct communicator. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. beat around the bush. There's no, there's no, no time for that. No. Yeah, and then no, he put me in, he put me in a group thread with like the uh, Lee, the lady that works at that runs Grace Humida, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, Tori, the guy who runs the the building. And they're like, we talked, and they're like, yep, see you tomorrow. So started working. Yeah, was, that was a great day. Great, yeah. Great. Hey, so you know those hard cardio sessions that we we've done yeah, together. Yeah. Do you do that like all the time? Yeah, every day. That's that's <laughs> insane. Yeah. Um. All, t so today was the first day I've touched weights. Um. Because Shane was supposed to come work out with me. We we're gonna go run and do like a hateful hunter or something. But he was busted up. His back was hurt. Um. And so I ice bathed and I was freezing. So like. I just took some kettlebells and I went into my driveway into the sun and I did like a meathead workout. Like I haven't lifted weights in 
Did you get a sick pump? That, I, I mean, I, do I look jacked? You do look jacked, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feeling pretty jacked. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I did like uh, Arnold's with kettlebells, oh, you know? Yeah. And I, then I was doing like curls to one arm. No, I was like holding an isometric hold and then like, I don't know. And I, I did some shrugs. I did shrugs today. I don't even know what shrugs are. <laughs> do, do you? <laughs> it's carrying the groceries. Do you, do you, so <laughs> for you, does your workouts change from like, like when you're like in competition mode, like in camp compared to when you're not in camp or do you kind of do the same thing all the time? So, uh, so for, there is a BJJ fanatics video, yeah. <laughs> but if you die, I don't want you to give me <laughs> secrets. Yeah. So for about seven or eight years, uh, prior to jujitsu, I was lifting uh, bodybuilder style. So pretty much just doing curls every day. <laughs> yeah. And, um, my goal was just to look good. And now that I look good, uh, I can just maintain it. And generally when I'm lifting, I'm lifting with a purpose of benefiting my grappling. So I do a lot of, uh, strength typically strength for back or uh hard cardio endurance like i'll do like emoms or um or i'll i'll do the hit the row or the ski machine for for time you know maybe i try to get like you know uh 15 calories in like uh 40 45 seconds rest 10 to 15 seconds and go again you know i'll do that for like 15 minutes um a pretty hefty sprint um and i try to mimic matches so i can be pretty I try to make the matches in my garage pretty much harder than the mm. than the matches in comp, comp you know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. But I also, I also the less you bleed. Yeah, I also, I also like your style. Like, uh, you know, we did quite a few emoms where you mix together like uh, deadlifts and, and front squats and and things like that. I like the the change in pace. Yeah, yeah. like the I love chaos and anarchy at a real high volume and high heart rate. Yeah. So like your body is never adapting. Yeah. You know, like you, if you're, if you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again, uh, obviously adaptation happens and, and you just get better at that movement. I don't want to be better at, I don't want to be good at exercise. Yeah. I want to be good at like life. Uh, like I want to be like run and rescue my kid. I want to go tear a dude's face off. I want to go like, you know, go be useful on the mats. Um, so like I want to be good at not fit. I don't want to be, I don't want to be good at exercise and fitness. I want to be good at life. And, Do you sprint like hard yeah. sprint? Yeah, really? Yeah. Hmm. A couple of days ago, uh, my son plays lacrosse and no, so it's Christmas day and he, he gets this new stick. It's called his best friend. He sleeps with it right now. Yeah. It's in the car with him. Um, at, uh, like uh, we have to wrestle it out of his hands for him to walk into school. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, and he's kind of being a brat. I'm like, Hey, we're going to go sprint, go put on your cleats. And he's like, can my best friend come? I was like, I mean, only if he wants to lose too. And, uh, <laughs> It's like I smash my eight year old. <laughs> let sprints. him know. Let him know. Yeah. 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 St I still got it. Uh, Is he eight now? Yeah. Oh my God. I, I couldn't. My, uh, my daughter's 15. I can't beat her at sprinting. Oh, you dude. can't beat your daughter? Uh, so listen, she runs cross country. She's running like 548 miles. Like she's Jesus. tall. What can she do a 40? <laughs> Oh, I have no idea. Way faster than me, though. But I also have to hobble because I'm broken as <laughs> I shit. I have to hobble? Yeah. Well, I, there's a, a huge... You, I'll, I'll, I'll bring Callie up here and you guys can race and then you're going to be like... I, I doubt it. I'm not going to lie. 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 I'm not You're not going to have a choice, bro. Yeah. I like this idea, actually. <laughs> my, my wife, after... I can hang with her for a mile. Yeah. And then she just... If she's so yeah. good, why the hell you suck? <laughs> Bro, I used to be great at running. And then I did You're 20 years in the army, five deployments to yeah, Afghanistan and Iraq. Is it your and knees now? now? Yeah. Now knees and back? I got two yeah. slip discs. I got like my... Uh, like my lower part of my back, I got two slip disc and then like my hips, one of the labrums all the way torn. What, what's that from? Jumping out of helicopters? No, none of it. It's just walking it's with heavy weight on. This oh, is the yeah, thing that- 100 pound pack yeah, on your back. The, yeah, Rocking will mess, mess you up like that? Yeah. Well, so, but here's really? the problem though. Make you shorter too. This is what, what people don't understand is like, so you wear like a plate carrier, right? The plate carrier is going to be what the plate carrier wears. It's everything that you have to put on the plate carrier after that. And if you're like just a normal ass infantry dude and you're like a team leader you're carrying all the old heaviest shit and so like your kid that's supposed to weigh like 45 pounds is now like 70 wow. and you're just walking around doing fucking patrols with that all day step off a curb wrong 70 pounds on your back yeah, yeah. you know you uh you see you, you see something weird on the side and you're like not paying attention and you step just there's just walking you step weird and you got 70 pounds weighted you've been walking for five miles um, body, body's fatigue. You haven't been sleeping, you know. So like, just it starts <laughs> starts adding up over years. And it, we, most of the time, when you do training, not not if you're like SF, but if you're a regular army, like you get like you'll carry 
like your combat load, but it's, those mags aren't full. Mm -hmm. So you get like maybe like two full mags, but then you put like seven full mags. Now everything is just amplified and it's so much heavier, plus water, plus a radio. Like I remember my first deployment, we didn't have the little like embitter radios. We had like ASIPs on our bag. Oh yeah. So I was a team leader rocking an ASIP. ASIP is a, a brick radio. This big. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's like 30 pounds. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 It's the most useless. <laughs> yeah. It sucks. And to like. And to, it's like line of sight. Yeah. I mean, so it's nearly useless yeah. for communication too. Yeah. Like. And we had. Hopefully I can see the person I'm trying to talk to. Otherwise <laughs> I can't talk. Yeah. And we didn't have M4s either. We had like M16A force. What like the musket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Charge. Yeah. So like we didn't have the cool shit. Like we had like the broken ass like. But like, yeah, all that stuff. So like doing that for so long just everything's tore down, but the army and the VA took care of me. So like, I, I can still like, I still train, like still compete. Like I'm train gonna often the, every, day. every day, two times every a day. day. Yeah. yeah. Really. yeah. So. I mean, he runs the, our, the midday classes. And then anytime like Giancarlo Bedoni, who, who teaches most of the nighttime classes, anytime that he's not here, he's covering down on those yeah. classes. Classics. And then I just he, want Nogi pant like the last Nogi pants they had. I won. Oh, sick. Yeah. So like masters too, but yeah, no, I still compete. I'm going to leave do that the part Austin out. Open. <laughs> just leave the masters part out. You want to? Want to. <laughs> nope. I put throw that in there. I realize there's a difference. Yeah, yeah. There's a huge difference. But yeah, no, yeah. The, this year, my goal is to win uh gi pans. Cause I still train in the gi. Yeah. Now that I'm older, I love the gi. I like the gi still a lot. Too. <laughs> yeah. It's the hands. Yeah. I like that though. You like the pain though? No, I like the, um, <laughs> yeah, I like the pain. Yeah. And I, but I also like the, uh, um, the reality of like a grip. I don't like people touching me. Yeah. Get off me. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> hashtag let go of my clothes. Well, how is that reality? <laughs> Wouldn't you just like, well, everywhere that I go in the world, I'm not walking around in, in spandex. Mm, I usually just wear like swimming trunks and yeah, get yeah, like, in a everywhere chair. I go in the world is not Austin, Texas. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nicky Rod's wearing spandex. Yeah. Yeah. I go. Also, <laughs> if I saw Nicky Rod and he had spandex on and I'm was running. trying to find me, I'm not going to fight I'm the guy. I'm going to hobble away as fast <laughs> as I can and I'm going to put as many obstacles in between me and you as possible yeah. and I'm always caring. So yeah. there's What's that. the, uh, so in, in B team, in seven days a week, mm -hmm. like how many times are you on the mats? Yeah, just once a day, um, and then I, I work out as well, like a uh, you know, cardio. So you're doing two like days, two days every day. So like yeah. a strength or conditioning, or strength and conditioning, or yeah, I'll do like um, you know mon Monday strength, uh, Tuesday Wednesday conditioning. I kind of repeat that repeat mm -hmm. that cycle. Mondays, but if I, if chest I'm, and tries Tuesdays, I'm just kidding. Yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> pretty much like that. Like I'll do bodybuilder one day, CrossFit cardiovascular uh for the next two days and then kind of cycle that um and then i'm really adamant about my sleep schedule like i try to get like you know 10 plus hours of sleep nice um in addition if i'm feeling banged up I, when i roll i'll just make sure i roll with lighter people and not crush them i'll just like work on technical things and then uh if my if i'm really banged up as well i'll treat the cardio session quite quite light as well like yeah. maybe i'll just do like the 20 percent what's uh, nutrition like yeah nutrition uh well it's quite different now before i was um before so more plates more dates did, did like a drug test on me right when gordon like accused me of doing steroids and stuff so he like randomly drug tested me found out that i wasn't um abusing any peds but that i also had high cholesterol so the high cholesterol was 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 correlated with the with the bodybuilder lifestyle because i was lifting like a bodybuilder for seven eight years but i was also eating like three pounds of like steak yeah and ground beef for um every day for What's years your city puerto rican yeah so we got naturally already. yeah yeah naturally uh high cholesterol as well um but but yeah i, I switched on my diet from like all the red meat to mainly just uh uh chicken ground turkey white rice veggies um and i think it's better now i'm, I'm supposed to get blood work done uh, very soon as well so it should be it should be much better i've changed how many, how many calories do you eat in a day i don't know about calories but i went from eating like four or five meals to like I mean, eat like two meals a day. What is your, yeah. what is your, besides the sleep, what are, what are you doing for like recovery? Yeah. Just make sure I, I hit, I try to hit my, a little bit less of my body weight and protein, mainly through uh, chicken and turkey. Um, and then carbs while I was, I'll, I'll just eat carbs like uh, until full and same thing with like vegetables uh, and fruit. Uh, but honestly, sleep, I feel like, uh, you know, sleep is the steroid you know what i mean it's the way you boost your testosterone it's where you get that growth hormone and i'm just very adamant about my sleep and uh, i think that's the best for recovery yeah, if i could go back in time that was that i was so the the military gives you so many amazing tools to teach you how to program manage how to lead you know like they're giving you all of the the, the training to i mean like the rambo line i can fly a helicopter and drive a tank you know and but like what am i gonna do 
but they give you some really bad things like habitual <laughs> bad sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it, a lot of caffeine, no yeah. sleep. Y- yeah. If you go to like any infantry company, like in the army, so like just a normal infantry company, mm-hmm. you go there, there's going to be dip cans and there's going to be just monster energy drinks in Everywhere. every trash can. Cause like you get like, maybe five, six hours of sleep a night if you're lucky. Yeah. And if you're in the field, like maybe get like, this is just normal infantry dudes, maybe four you guys hours are on, sleep. on duty, like, yeah. like constantly. You walk yeah. down through the barracks and they carry that same sleep cycles back to the time that they're in the rear. Mm. So at two o'clock in the morning, you walk down the barracks and you hear video games, you, you hear them talking to their girlfriends or um, you're trying to kick a whore out of a room. Yeah, it's a fucking so, frat house, bro. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah. and it's, it, it it's really, it was, it was hard. It was, it wasn't until maybe about five years ago that I made that big decision about being really intentional and disciplined and sleep mm-hmm. Dude, changed everything productivity, mm-hmm. how much I could do in a day, how much I could train in a day, the, re- the recovery work like looked like, you know, with a lot of, um, accumulative damage to my body. Um, you know, I, I was trying to figure out ways to, to, to recover, but also pain manage mm-hmm. doing sleep was the, you said it. It is like the PED. Yeah, just sleep. I do. A, I do a few things to make sure I get good sleep. Like, um, I, an hour before bed, I try to call off the blue light. Like, you know, no phone or whatnot. Uh, in addition, I try to get my room really dark. Blackout curtains are are great. Um, and then that's. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. The other ones uh, are inappropriate to talk about, but having a spouse that that is uh, on the same schedule. Yeah. And the the uh, like chemically post intimate time with your significant other is like the best way to naturally fall asleep. Yep. I agree with that. It's like the best. I sleep How do you go well. to sleep so quick? Look at her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My girl. Empty the tank for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, let me ask you this. You and your brother are pretty athletic, right? Yep. So what are your parents like? Are they pretty athletic too? I imagine that apple didn't fall far from the tree for both of y'all's cases. Um, yeah, I'm sure they're, I mean, dad, my dad's like about six foot one um, and a hardworking guy. He's worked, you know, two jobs his whole life. He's, um, does a lot of like, uh, he flips houses. That's growing up. That's kind of, um, mm. you know, what we were into. Um, and mom was a stay at home mom. Uh, I think my dad tried out for the wrestling team at like uh, eighth grade in Atlantic city, New, New Jersey. And then he kind of like moved out. But I don't think my, I think my parents both dropped out at like eighth grade or so. So they didn't have a chance to really explore, uh, athletics or, or, or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I learned, I learned about hard work from a, a very young age. Like, uh, you know, like I said, my dad was flipping houses and, you know, I helped him ever since I could pick up a hammer. So, um, I learned that, um, there's gotta be more of the life than mixing concrete. So I had to figure it out. He was always very adamant. He was like, listen, no matter what you could do, you got to work hard. Just make sure you find what you want. How old were you when you learned that? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like five yeah you know i was uh i uh, yeah half half of my whenever i was not in school i was helping him in in uh, philadelphia you know um, we were fixing pipe fencing like the proper farm agricultural pipe fencing at my house brother was set six six or seven at the time and uh he's and he was like bitching about work and it was hot like we're welding and uh he's just like eh, i'm like you got a couple of options. One, you're going to have to work hard your whole entire life. But if you don't want to do this forever, then you're going to have to be smart. <laughs> and you're going to have to be like, you're going to have to work so hard at the things that you care about that you won't have to do this because this is your other option. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to be in labor or you're going to do something that you like to do. There, there's something to be said about that too. Cause like Cain Velasquez was kind of the same way. Like where his parents mm-hmm. grew up like migrant, they grew up working in fields and stuff, just working really hard. So there's something to be said about like teaching that to your kids and like seeing like, Hey, like if I don't want to do that, I have to do this. Yeah. Like that's it, another dude. I wish hadn't gotten injured. He was like such a physical, yeah. great wrestler, great jujitsu, you know, he's back. Pretty good stand up. The, the yeah, whole thing, great stand-up, you yeah. know, yeah, tough as nails, yeah. but his knees just went like yeah, real back. bad. Yeah, is that from the is that from the wrestling or? <sighs> no, it was, it was just a, yeah. No, it wasn't. A, it was a variety of like oh. orthopedic. I don't know where to put my foot. <laughs> well, okay, that's a good spot. Um, a couple injuries in the gym. A couple of like a genetic pass down from his family. You think uh, a guy like that overtrained? Yeah. 
We all over train. Yeah. 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 If you train MMA in like the early 2000s, I think that was like the standard. Yeah. Like everybody owned over train. And if you look at like all those dudes, like that were like the shoebox guys, like back in the day, like all those dudes are hurting now because CT is a real deal. And like they yeah. used to just send it. So, yeah, a lot of fights in the gym as well, right? It's like, yeah. oh, it's stop. Yeah. Like we, it wasn't sparring. Like we would, it was 100%. Except you're wearing shin pads. Yeah. It's the only difference, which is even worse because then like you get more damage to the brain. So this guy. So I, I, I've, I have met a lot of people that would like go to Greg Jackson and train with Tim, like Colton Smith and all those guys. And they said that like Tim, like they would like Andrew Craig was telling you, he told the story on the podcast where like he threw like he toe poked Tim like a stomach kick and then like hit him with like a combo. And then he looked at the clock and he was like, oh, no, there was like three minutes left. And he spent the last three minutes like push up against the wall. And Tim just up and kind of <laughs> just got in like this. <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and, and, and he was trying to fall. And Tim wouldn't let him fall. Him yeah. 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 Tim knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You remembered it right no, away. That happened all the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Team Rock, but, yeah, but also though, <laughs> I also heard stories about Greg Jackson where like somebody would like come at, like go hard and Tim would hit the cage with the person. He would just yeah. pick him up and just throw him in. The <laughs> yeah. Because well, our, the posts weren't wrapped in padded. <laughs> yeah. So he was trying to <laughs> 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 nice. like, I mean, you know, the difference, like there's like, Hey, we're being cool and we're rolling. And then like, I'm coming after you and I want to hurt you. Yeah. And, um, and I knew the difference and like, yeah. you come at me with the ladder, uh, all right. Yeah. Like I'm gonna put you through that steel post. If who who where would you recommend I go study mixed martial arts striking for in in Austin, Texas? Oh, dude, there's Ooh. there's some great strikes. So Elton Wells ambush Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. It's on the north side. Um, I mean, he has trained countless dudes to world titles in in Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. um, he has five or six good MMA strikers in there. Andrew Craig, mm -hmm. who teaches um, at. He he was the coach for the MM, MMA team for for Tenth Planet, mm. um, and he is a good black belt. Um, he fought in the UFC, uh, legacy light heavyweight and middleweight champion. Oh wow! He was uh, on the same circuit as like Derek Lewis, like coming up. Oh cool! Yeah, a yeah. little uh, bit before him. But they remember Chris on Lieben? Cards. Yeah, I do. Yeah, uh, Andrew retired. Chris Lieben. Yeah, oh. like mm -mm. that. That was the fight where like Chris fought a couple of times after that, but after. Andrew beat him so badly, he never looked the same. Oh, that was also though. Andrew didn't win that first round. He's never. I think he's never won a first round. I don't think he's UFC. ever won a first round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he's the nicest guy ever. Yeah, but like, there's something about him where he just you have to piece him up the first round, and then after that, like, it's on. It's because he's so nice that he's like just let you kick like, his ass the first the yeah, first round. He's like, like, oh, we're actually fighting. Yeah, okay, it's weird too because you'll see Flips a switch after that. Like, he's a pure coach now. Yeah. yeah, like he worked out with us yesterday and. um how bad was that, Doug? He was sore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even because I knew he, he gets there and, and we're like starting because it was going to be a like 50% work to race rest ratio throughout the whole entire workout. And um, and we're, we call it the three moms. So it's three 15 minute E moms. Mm. The first one was toes to bars and burpees. The second one was uh, 15 or 12 calorie row with 12 kettlebell swings um, every minute on the minute. So like, a lot. Yeah. And uh, Andrew. And then the other one was a, a five rep Rooney. So five deadlifts, five bent over rows, um, five hang cleans, five push press, five back squat, drop the bar. Your your rest is your rest. Oh. And um, a Andrew's trying to like, like move away from me. And I was like, <laughs> so I partnered with him and I rode his ass the whole entire time. And the photo at the end, he's just like a beat dog. He's just sitting here. Is that why he's not here today? He just, I don't know why he's, he was supposed to be. We have stuff to go over today. But he he's, here he's an amazing striking coach. <laughs> yeah, and really. he really, I think, if, if, you're, if you want to learn just Muay Thai, I would go to Elton at Ambush mm -hmm. um, as a purist, maybe no better just Muay Thai than there. But Cody trains there too, right? Yep. yep. Cody Steele. No, no, Cody. Our Cody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cody still also trains yeah, yeah. there and he's good. Yeah. And he, he's been knocking people out. Yeah. Like yeah. scary. Chucking people through his judo is good. His jujitsu is good. His wrestling's good. And now his Muay Thai, like he, when he touches people, 
They go to sleep. How do we not mention? We mentioned all these schools, but we didn't mention Brazilian Fight Factory. They also have some killers out there. They, That's they true. Do, they're yeah. smaller, right? Yeah. But they're, they're smaller. So, like, whatever. But they got some good guys out there. They're all, like, local homegrown, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they've been here forever. Yeah, I remember yeah. doing Tackets the uh, and, Submission uh, Hunter. Have you ever like, rolled with those boys? Tackett Brothers? Oh, yeah. 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 They're yeah. great. Tough guys, yeah. yeah. Sure. Back in the day... Um, I used to do like the submission hunter, like the sub only thing here in Texas, a couple other places. And I remember like the Tackett brothers being like the orange and yellow belts coming like, hey, great job, professor. And I was like, thanks, guys. <laughs> and then I see him now and I'm like, D I'm not going. Who's that dude from Lockhart with the orange belt son that has the, with the, has the mullet? Mike. Oh. Mike? Oh, and so Mike is the dad. Yeah, no. Mike, what's the Isaac. Isaac. Isaac, Isaac yeah. Is, yeah. The brown belt? belt. Yeah. No, oh, the, oh, the, the younger one. I don't know the younger Yeah, I don't know man. the number. He's 15. Yeah. I have to treat him like a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the orange belt. <laughs> yeah. And like, I grab him and I I chuck him and I smash him from the top because like <laughs> you give him any space, like just he knows all the things, you know, yeah. and he's like doing all these stupid guards that these these Was the brown belt is nasty too. Oh, yeah. 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 Like yeah. like we again they cut they usually come, but I think they're more gee mm -hmm. and like they're their like, dad's good. Yeah, he's yeah, Mike, old yeah. bearded dude. He like does diving stuff for work and then teaches jujitsu and his sons are just nasty. Yeah. Like that's awesome. Yeah. And they, they got the go button too. Um, They're a hero's affiliate too. The last Friday I was here with them. Yeah. He halfway through the round, just he's launching all of his hard work into the trash can. And you're like, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that, I remember that. he walked up and they're like, like it, what do you, can I, can I have a second? Yeah. <laughs> Cause we have that trash can by the door. He threw yeah. it like four times. Oh, Wait, really? Who is this? Uh, Isaac. Well, and Isaac then did. <laughs> he went back out and trained <laughs> after oh. that. Yeah, yeah good sick. kids. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. You're like yeah, 20, what a great city. Like 19, 20 yeah. years old, brown yeah. belt. Yeah. yeah. I guess started when I was 20 years old. Yeah. Who, who, are, who are your best rounds in your gym? Uh, Craig Jones, when he rolls with me, he'll give me a, he give me a roll every, every couple months. <laughs> he's like, um, are you guys on different training schedules or no, he's just fragile. <laughs> he's, just <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a long skinny dude. He's long skinny. Yeah. And <laughs> I love yeah. that skinny. Yes, he, he is. is. <laughs> he is, but he, he he's also, six, four and he's 230 pounds. Oh, well, he's two, like two Oh five. Yeah. Is he, is, is he going to do ADCC, the one coming up? I believe so. He should. I'll be, I want to, I'm not going to let him not do it. <laughs> yeah. he, he needs to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Th this bracket's going to be <laughs> does, spicy. Yeah. Do you, does, is there a lot of banter going back and forth between you guys? Cause it seems like, like, um, like new wave, like mm -hmm. when you guys split new wave, all super serious guys, right? Like they got yeah. John, everyone's super serious. And then you take the other side of it. You got like Craig Jones, you got you, you got your brother, Dude, you got Ethan everybody Carlson. says John is so, I, I know he has like a weird sense of humor, but yesterday, um, they're out there getting, um, oh, who's getting ready for the fight in Japan. No idea. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Hoshi or something? No. no. And uh, th they're out there, and I, I hear one Japanese word come out of his mouth. I was like, it's not a cult. It's not a Japanese cult, John. <laughs> and he's like, ha, ha, ha. And then, you know, like, he's a, he's a funny dude, and he's, he's even more fun to, like, push his buttons. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just I just mean from the outside looking in, like you look at like the side that when you like everybody seems pretty serious, right? Because I've never trained there. And then I've seen the B team side and you have Craig Jones, you have you, Ethan, like all those guys, like your guys podcast, the Simple Man podcast, mm -hmm. hilarious. Oh, thank you. Thank El you. Segundo podcast, hilarious. Yeah. So like you get to see that side of it, like the humor well, in even, that. Do you follow these guys on social media? Yeah. Like even that, like you and Crate, you're you're hilarious. Thank you. We, yeah, we just try to have some fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as like the the jujitsu beef goes, it's just like um, I think Craig just really enjoys uh, having some kind of controversy. Yeah. Me, I'm more of a post and ghost kind of guy. You know, I just like stay <laughs> off of off of social media after I post. But uh, you know, I, I reply here and there. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I I uh, I sincerely like like all of the guys that have beefs with each other. I, I like all of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love Gordon. I, yeah. I you know, and I, I love um, Marigelli and, and, and I love Victor. Like I, I legitimately, we, 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 we regularly train at, at six blades. Yeah. We, um, Tuesday wrestling. Yeah. Like it gets pretty spicy. Almost, almost <laughs> of, when everybody's here, it's like every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I have not got to train with you guys anywhere near enough, but like, the times that I've been with everyone, like these are all great athletes. They're all great people. They're all hardworking. Like they all, they all have ap attributes and char characteristics that I appreciate and, val and value. And then I'm like, but I fucking love them just fighting because like, <laughs> I, I also like to watch. And I just want to poke buttons. <laughs> you, know, you know, he does. He, he texts me at like, like, 
11 o'clock at night and he's like hey six blades tomorrow we're wrestling i'm like oh no nice <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah or it'll be the morning up it'll be like he'll be like 7 30 be like hey i don't know what you got planned for this morning but we're wrestling as six blades and i'll be like oh no. i'm drinking up water last just time wrestling. <laughs> like, just, yeah. wrestling, yeah. just just absolutely pure yeah. shoes on uh no uh. yes i w i want shoes me and sean jay fight about this all the time mm. so he has the old school um fuji mats textured or not textured. Textured. textured they're so rough i fell down on one of them like like we were just drilling something and yeah. shane took me down not a real takedown it was a technique right <laughs> Drilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 shane has shane has an amazing top game with no takedown <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah. so his top game is like because it's because he shane like but like if you don't know shane came up like with tim mm -hmm. tim used to be like tell brown belts like hey go get him Nice. And he's, he's like my best friend in the world. Friend, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So all I would do anytime that I have like a good talented brown or black belt come in, I'd be like, see that really pretty dude over there? Oh, you're going to destroy him. Nice. <laughs> Shane would just be sitting here like a, just a, a wet cat as yeah. the another dude goes over there and tries to kill him. <laughs> yeah. But he, so yeah. So he had like probably one of the hard, cause he didn't wrestle. Like he, I think like he was saying country music. So like he didn't really have like an, a big athletic background. Yeah, like rodeo, I think is all he yeah, had. Yeah. Yeah. But the it, but different, so, different. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, not wrestling since he was four. Yeah, like, yeah. So he had some wrestling since he was four. I don't know if you did got me again, you motherfucker. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so he came up with no experience and then him and Tim became friends and Tim convinced him to start doing jujitsu. So he had to come up that way. Yeah. Black belt in 10 years. No, it's good. I mean, he's, he's Hell yeah. super technical. Yeah. Um, but that like rough. So you, we what your, your match was two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. About two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, afterwards, Gordon goes up, gets up to walk into the back. And as he's walking the back, you're, you're calling him out. Yeah. Um, like yeah, it was obviously planned. 50 K. Yeah. It was awesome because you knew you're going to smash and like, absolutely trash your match and then you're looking more towards the opportunity with a mic to be like gordon so your call out was 50k 50k winner takes it all um your math was a little questionable though because like winner takes 100 grand like no winner takes 50 grand because, <laughs> yeah. well yeah. 50 i said 100 grand on the line yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yep yeah. you're not wrong there <laughs> Wait, I, let's, say, let's do it for the title you yeah. know what i mean it, those 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 rules though i think those rules were awesome except for the fact that you got a negative point in yeah. the mouth like i was how the fuck does that work <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's to drop the first f bomb in the podcast no like, no we, that for, you're in mount yeah. and so like no. in, in mma if i'm in the guard and i'm just sitting there holding a dude down okay i get it like do damage or improve position and if not i'm gonna stand you up i get that but i'm not deducting points yeah. i'm gonna stand you up but in the, like if there's an athlete in mount you can't improve position anymore. <laughs> What's he supposed yeah. to do? Like, He's already he pulled over. But it it's not my fault. He can't pull this guy over anymore. Can't get me off him. But it wasn't <laughs> like you had like you like you know you were just in mount and you weren't doing anything. You were working. Like there was stuff happening, and I I was watching. I was like, what the like. And even like like Tom DeBloss like came up on the net after that and like had a post about like like how the fuck is Nikki Rod all about to lose that match because of these rules, right? Like, and you winning that match changes kind of the landscape of like like how people look at jujitsu right now because again, ADCC is supposed to be Yuri versus well, it's Yuri versus Gordon. Mm -hmm. You just like, they're pretty close to ADC. They're, it's not hundred percent, but it's pretty close to ADCC rules. And you just washed him. Yep, I did. I washed him. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I'm in. Yeah, I'm in mounted position, and um, while while I'm mounted, he's kind of like stalling. Right, he's like keeping his hands to his chest, not trying to escape, just c conceding. And I look at the ref. I'm like, Hey, can you give this guy? Can you give this guy a negative? And the ref's like, Keep working. And Yuri looks at me and says, Shut up. And I look him dead in the eyes. I was like, I love you. <laughs> 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 and I think that really threw him off, and I think that's part partly partly why I uh, why I dominate that match. I, I, was, I was in his head. You're in his head. Yeah, that would get, that would get in the dude's head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just normal. Here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I I. I, I just couldn't believe like I was like I was in shock and all the posts about that about the UFC fight pass. It, the only thing people talked about after that was that 
was the you getting negative points in mount. Again, I like the rules. I like the ref's energy. I just don't think that ref really kind of knew what was going on. Did you I ever think- see the the Ranger Up? They had the grappling classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a hybrid of um, points similar to judo and wrestling mm. and takedowns. Um, if you pull guard, you got taken down. Um, on And then kind of IBJJF in passing mount side control uh and rear mount all similar points in those scales and then advantages for any attacks um no deductions and there's time in dominant position Mm. so on an equal scoreboard and an equal advantage board you have time in dominant position i love everything about this and and it, it is really like who is the superior grappler? If you are on bottom, you are losing this grappling fight. Like if you're in a non-dominant position, you are losing this grappling fight. If the other person is throwing up more attacks on you, then you are losing this fight. So they keep track of the time like yeah. you're mounted. Yeah. Oh, I think it's good. Like in wrestling, NCAA wrestling, they have ride time, which yep. is kind of yeah. similar. I, I know, value that, that. It's called the grappling classic. They literally like took all of the ideas from all forms of pugilistic grappling and put it into one r- rule set. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah, that makes sense. It was, and you would like, it's very complimentary to your style. One of the toughest things about jujitsu is just the constant change in rules. Every yep. time we compete, it's always a different rule set. It's like, imagine going, playing in the NFL and every, every weekend you have to uh, adjust your, your strategy. Yep. You know? I, I hate the, I'm not a fan of the ADCC. Uh, the, the fact that I can sit there and hand fight for 10 minutes bothers me you know the rules that i, I wish 30 they would, seconds and i'm like giving you a stalling yeah but you know one of the things i wish they would change we'll talk about ibjjf because that's what i compete at is uh <laughs> if someone if i shoot a takedown on someone and their defense is a thumb to my eye can we take a point can we take a point or can we give me the takedown because i'm sick of that i got yeah. poked in the eye by the same dude four times in one weekend because i went against him and gi, and then I went to get some no gi both times deep on a takedown. He sprawled with his thumbs in my eye. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I never thought fair. about doing that, but I would <laughs> <laughs> yeah. might try it. Taking notes and over here. It's not illegal because I did it and I looked at the ref and he was like, keep going. Yeah. But I can't see. <laughs> like, <laughs> a little salty about it. The um, You talked about a little bit earlier uh, how you having to compete at black belt but never really having the opportunity to come up and skill. How, how do you break down um, who your roles are in div- like, I want to get good at this technique. Are you going with a similarly skilled person or are you going with somebody that you can execute this technique on? Are you strangling def- blue belts? <laughs> I definitely will <laughs> There's go times for it. <laughs> that's know, my point. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Mo- uh, like 80% of my training when I'm, focusing on, on uh, developing technique will be able to get with people that I'm substantially better than. So I could just like pass guard, let them up, pass guard, let them up. Um, like for instance, if I'm, if I'm trying to work on Dele Hiva defense, I'll, I know two or three guys in my gym that are really good at Dele Hiva. Um, I'll, I'll pick the guy that's worst first. I'll go with him, <laughs> get some reps in, in a live round and just force that Dele Hiva over and over and then work my way up to a guy like, you know, Craig Jones is, that's great at Dele Hiva. So uh, um, yeah, for sure. When I'm, when I'm working on technique, I'm 80% of my training is, is with guys that I'm substantially better than they couldn't, they couldn't do anything. So when Craig Jones will roll with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you got to write that shit down. Wait yeah. it's like, hey. <laughs> when, now, now when me and Craig roll, I just give him like a 45, 50% to keep him coming back. I do that you know to I mean? Tim too. Whenever yeah. I roll with Tim, I give him nice. 40, 55. That's <laughs> smart. Yeah. yeah. Where's Yaku at? I have no idea. Is he doing concerts? He's now? on. He's on vacation. Yeah. He's out. He's out for the- another good yeah. big black belt, uh, Yaku Kalili. That's that's a, a fun role. Our army fighter, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. sick. Yeah. He is the he has the worst and best jujitsu all at the same time. What does that mean? L- exactly. Like he doesn't have good wrestling. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he doesn't not have good wrestling. That's weird. <laughs> like like you'll, he will never. So listen, he will good never judo. Or well, like, no, but he will never shoot a takedown on you. The defend one, but he is so hard to take down, mm. right? Like he, like he doesn't have like great guards. He's, he's hard to throw too. Yeah. I can't lift him. So I'm um, even in gi, like good good grips. I have a hard time elevating him. And we uh, we scrapped a little bit at Ten Planet, and his very uh, great base, like super hard. To yeah. Move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I he's that. Ju- he's good at jujitsu, but that's not what he's best at. What is he? His striking 
is he's like Gandalf. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's really? got that gray beard. He'll hit you three times. You'll see a flash of gray beard, and then he'll be standing next to you. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. He, he hits like freight train too. Yeah, we did a protect, he hits hard. And yeah. protect, I need to learn how to throw a punch one of these days. It's yeah, good, probably. It's good to know. Yeah. Well, you're literally, like, in, there's five professional fighters in the building. <laughs> yeah, like, it's just more of a time thing. Like, nah, I hear you. do I do I do what pays the the, yeah, the yeah. bills, or do I you know do what's fun? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna toot my horn. I'm loving this phase of my life where I get to do gi jiu jitsu just wrestle not like wrestling to be good at MMA or wrestling to be good at jiu jitsu like I'm doing just wrestling like I'm back in a room as as a 10 year old yeah um getting to do like seminars like this where like I literally just get to do the things that um so I do just boxing I go to archetype and we go every week and we do just boxing and then we do just kickboxing and then we do just clinch muay thai just in the prom and it is so fun except how, how old are you, you? 45. 45, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah. You look good. It, except for whenever you say, hey, Patrick, bring in a cup and a mouthpiece and MMA gloves because Satoshi's going to be here tomorrow. I gave him some rounds. No, you did. I but did. they're like, you're go. I haven't, I haven't sparred MMA in forever. Like I've been retired from MMA for a long time. And they're like, you got the first round with him. Satoshi's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's a big dude. Yeah. Well, the problem though is Tim's warm up was like, it was like 20 minutes, every minute on the minute. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Five. And then I did rounds. Yeah, yeah. nice. <laughs> now I'm ready. <laughs> hit the wall, hit a, hit an outside single, and then like put him against the wall for the rest of the yeah. round. And I was like, Sick. so round one, he was with him and Yako. Yeah. And then me and at that time, me and Tim were like, we were grappling. I took Tim down. Um, you did spike double. Yep, it's, it's my move. That's a good one. Yep, I remember it. And um, but he fought back up. Um, uh, but I was like, I'm exhausted now. I have to go fight this fucking Olympic. He hits so hard too. Satoshi, yeah. Satoshi he looks him. like he hits. He hard. hits so hard. I, His he's hands thick are gigantic. Everywhere, yeah. And um, and uh, the judo hip thing. Uh, well, he sits down on every punch. Like he he can't hit you softly. Yeah. Every punch is like that was a jab. It felt like I just got. A right cross yeah there's a jab and there's he was being super nice to me and i ran the whole time <laughs> yeah. and i'd make him chase me because everyone else was tying up with him and just getting tossed yeah no hard pass so i would <laughs> run <pass. laughs> i would run and i'd get him to come towards me and i'd shoot like like an outside single leg and then i'd, I'd get leg him, attacks yeah i'd get him nice. down and then like i was like randy couture james tony like <laughs> <laughs> he got hurt he's he's moving to austin then he got he yeah. he's hurt getting recovered yeah but that, that we're running out of time yeah but that randomly happens here you'll just get a call and be like hey bring this stuff in and I'm like, oh. in the back of my truck right now, I have my lacrosse gear. I have my hockey gear. I have my MMA gear. I have my Muay Thai gear. I have my boxing gear. Like seriously, in the back of my truck right now, where I got our towels from for our host shower. Stay ready ready to go. Th those three, those boxes. Cause yeah. I was coming from the hockey rink to come here. That's why it's two minutes late. Nice. Yeah. It didn't really matter though. Cause people were still coming in. That was crazy. Yeah. I cannot oh. believe how many people were here. We put it out on, we put it on Tuesday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Short time, yeah. Well, we didn't convert. We didn't confirm it until Sunday, I think. Something like that, yeah. yeah but yeah, I didn't know to put it out until Tuesday because that's when we did the meeting because the, we weren't at work on Monday. So we put it out on Tuesday. I did a video yesterday, 110 people. That's awesome. Yeah. We, yeah. we were yesterday internally trying to decide what is safe. Like number-wise? Yeah. That's about the limit. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. I said 100. <laughs> and he goes, Tim goes, send it. <laughs> they brought, yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Yeah. You guys, you cannot come in. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He literally just volunteered to teach but, a seminar for a bunch of veterans. So, like, he, shut up. And some of, the, some of the the people that do heroes were like, they knew, so they came in early to like sign up, and then I saw them later. I was like, hey, you guys, it's a cool vibe orders. for a room, though, huh? Oh, it's awesome, dude. Those uh, like we've had a legitimate dudes come up after those after a class, man. Mm. I was thinking about a hollow point nine millimeter in my mouth last night. Oh, wow. And all I wanted to do was make it to jujitsu. So like the, the fact that you came in here and like packed those mats, um, there are some faces I didn't even recognize that I had, yeah. there was two SF dudes I haven't seen in years oh, wow. that were in here. Like yeah. I didn't even know they were in town and that the, but this motherfucker brings it here. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was like, what are you guys? I haven't seen you. Like, what are you doing? Are you yeah. still here? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, what are you doing? And you're like, well, Nicky Rod's here. I was like, Okay, cool. Yeah, it seems like I'm here every fucking week, and, but. <laughs> and, but, that, but that's also why Tim and I say something at the end of class, like always. And the message is always talk to someone. And even if you don't like think of that person to be the one that would hurt themselves, make sure you talk to that person because it's usually that person because it's always a shock when it happens. Yeah. 
Where can people find you? Where can people follow you? Where can people find your instruction? Yeah, you guys can uh, check me out on Instagram at NickyRod247. Uh, everything I have to offer is link in the bio, right? You can check mm-hmm. out uh, my beef jerky, jerky carnejerky.com, C-A-R-N-E-J-E-R-K-Y.com. Um, I sell instructionals if you guys want to get better. Uh, check out B-Team JJ, B-Team Jiu-Jitsu on YouTube. Uh, we sell tons of merch and create, create content. We shoot vlogs and whatnot and just you know keep the people's heart, hearts filled. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D- definitely check out the uh the quintet um documentary. The, yeah the documentary guys yeah. it's so good mm. thank you <laughs> yeah yeah it's awesome. hard on that <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> apparently someone didn't have to cut a lot of weight though dude <laughs> <laughs> they wanted they wanted me right <laughs> First of all, I, I came in. I came in. Let's see what happened. All right, day before <laughs> more, morning of weigh-ins. Right, we go. We're in Japan, so we go uh, to uh, a sauna to sweat it out. Right, and almost everybody gets in the sauna except for me because I have tattoos. Right, even though my teammates have tattoos, they slid them in. Um, so I was like, uh, you know, I was. I was feeling some type of way uh, a bit in, in my feelings. So that kind of pissed me off a little bit. I couldn't get in, in the sauna. So they got to sit there and sweat and I had to do fucking a hundred burpees. Right. Yeah. So I, I need to get a couple of pounds off. So I did an EMOM 10 burpees every minute on the minute for 10 minutes and knocked out, lost like fucking three pounds. It's beautiful. So I did the work. They fucking they, took, they choose the easy way, right? They sat down and sweated. I fucking, I burned some girl calories. You're welcome for, for me bringing that up. <laughs> Dude, I uh, really, really sincerely thank you for coming in. Um, both for the podcast and for teaching that class, that was that was great instruction. And the dudes and the gal- girls, ton of girls out there today. Yeah, it was well, five I mean, or six. I didn't recognize, but yeah, <laughs> it's the green eyes. <laughs> yeah, he's like very <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. My boy's a dime though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like cool. We don't have middle aged men here. Finally, we got a, a, a young <laughs> right. pro. <laughs> All right, we got any business to do at the end of the podcast? Is that it? Nope, that's it. We're Sick. Good. All right, stay safe, stay free. Follow Nikki Rod and um, go and train. God bless America. See you guys. Like and subscribe.